Let's draw and nature journal some tropical fish before their Amazon ecosystem looks like this. Yes, there is a stream under there somewhere. We're in Manaus, Brazil, and in this forest preserve, there's over 70 species of fish that we can nature journal. But first, we have to catch them. Luckily, Anahita from Igapo Org is here to help. Igapo Org helped me learn about this forest preserve outside of Manaus that protects a 10 by 10 kilometer square patch of land while the city expands and destroys everything in its path. But before I draw these fish, I have another bridge to cross and some obstacles to get over. I don't know why, but I'm really struggling with motivation right now. Maybe it's the 100 degree heat here in Manaus, or maybe it's because I haven't been sleeping at night from all of the chigger bites on my legs and other parts of my body I'm not gonna mention, but I shouldn't be this low energy when I'm in a, such a cool place getting ready to nature journal some amazing Amazonian fish in this Igarape ecosystem. Look at this super clear water here. There's some really cool species of fish. It looks like an aquarium out of your dreams and I'm about to nature journal it. Are you ready? Look how crazy that fruit is right there. This is an Igarape and it's one of the main ecosystem types in this part of the Amazon near Manaus, the heart of Amazonia. You can see lots of palms. You can see this clear water stream here. I mucked it up a little bit. This is the dry season. These, these areas get flooded a lot higher. It's a flooded forest. This is a type of flooded forest, one of several types of flooded forests in the Amazon. And this one in particular is defined by this clear water and look at this sandy substrate. This is a very low nutrient soil type. Just below the leaves, just below the organic matter here, it's pure sand, it's almost pure silica, very low nutrients. So a lot of these trees have developed adaptations to take advantage of the organic matter as soon as it lands on the ground, or maybe even catch it, like some of these palms catch leaves right here in their stalks and as those leaves decompose their roots are able to get them so you have a lot of really shallow roots look at these roots here you have really clear water and some really cool fish which is the main thing we're going to draw right now is some of the fish but i do want to do a little landscape showing what this ecosystem looks like to go along with our fish Doing landscape paintings in rainforests like this is a little bit different because everything is more crowded. So what I often do is I choose a central element such as this tree with its crazy roots that I'm really interested in and I build a landscape around that. In this case, I'm also trying to simplify while showing the most important elements such as the palms and the emergent roots and stuff like that. Okay, so... <laughs> I just did something really dangerous, which is I started adding stuff to my landscape painting that I don't, or landscape drawing that I don't actually see. So things from my imagination that I wanted to include in the picture. And that's always tricky. And in this case, I messed up and it looks really bad. It looks really fake. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some words and some arrow pointers to turn it into a diagram and make it look better. There you can see I tried to add some aquatic plants and this whole part here with the fish looks pretty fake. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add some words down here and some arrows, maybe using gray ink and make it look better and add important information. I thought I was gonna be drawing in the shade right now, but I guess not. Time to do the watercolor and I'm gonna give you three tips about watercolor. First, start with the pale colors first. Next, don't try to show all the different colors green. For this tropical rainforest with infinite greens, I'm only going to use two different color greens. And then my last tip is when you're starting out, don't try to show the light or water reflections like I'm doing in this one. If you want more tips and want to really get better at watercolor landscape painting, check out this link to my Skillshare class all about it. You really have to be careful with watercolor when it's 100% humidity in the rainforest, but that's for another video.
All right, that's a little bit crazier than I originally was planning, but I think it captures a little bit of the light and a little bit of the feeling of the place. And so I think now I either deserve a huge piece of chocolate or a nap. All my chocolate melted, so I'm gonna take a nap. But while I'm doing that, let me show you how I drew those fish from a little aquarium at the beginning. Drawing moving fish is not easy, but luckily I have some practice. I started with a cartoon of Anahita doing the netting of the fish in the pond, and now I'm trying to get some of the basic characteristics of these fish. I switched to gray pen for a little bit of note taking and to try to get some of the pale marks on the fish. I also took out my pencil and was considering using that for the pale marks. Some patterns on fish are really challenging to draw. It's also challenging when a wasp lands on my hand. Ah! Back to the fish. These ones I used an arrow to point to where I need to add color later. But you can see that I look up and look down and it takes me a while to start getting the details of these fish since they are moving. But at the same time, I'm taking notes about them. I switched to a more comfortable location that was easier to draw from but I'm still drawing from live fish and not from photos, which is pretty hard. I'm trying to add the details little by little and use observation. This is what nature journaling is really about, basing it on direct observation. It's not science illustration. I am gonna try to add the color too with the live fish, and one of the things I noticed was that many of these fish could change colors. They would get darker and lighter, and some of the colors went away as they got stressed out from being in the small aquarium. At this, one, at this point, one of the fish even jumped out of the aquarium, and it was about at this point where I decided that it was time to put them away. These small aquariums, like the one I'm using, are used commonly by scientists, and there's protocols around how long you can keep fish in them for without um, causing too much stress to the fish. So I Ever since I was a little kid, I was fascinated by Amazonian fish, and now I finally had the chance to observe and nature journal them in their wild habitat. And this wild habitat is only protected because the government of Brazil decided to make this place a park. And one of the reasons why nature journaling is really important and one of the differences between nature journaling and science illustration, in my opinion, is that when you go through the process of nature journaling, it makes you care more about these things and more about this place which makes you more likely to vote for politicians and vote for policies that protect these natural areas. This 10 kilometer by 10 kilometer park near Manaus is getting swallowed by urban development and the population is growing quickly and people need natural resources in Brazil. If more people nature journal, they're more likely to make those decisions to protect these natural places and actually care about them. If you believe that nature journaling can make a difference, making the world a better place the same way that I do, if you believe in that vision that nature journaling can help the world and can help save biodiversity, consider joining my Patreon here. As a member, for as little as $5 a month, you can get access to a bunch of special exclusive content, but you can also help support me and my work and my life's work to help use nature journaling to make the world a better place and protect the world's biodiversity. See you next week. Bye.